All right, everybody, welcome back to Talking Soccer. Today, we are going to talk a little bit about the Kansas City Current acquiring Hannah Glass, formerly of Bayern Munich, of the Swedish national team, and just another high profile signing from a team that is taking no prisoners this offseason. My initial thoughts seeing this acquisition was what does that mean for Kate Del Fava, and what does that mean for the formation? Hannah Glass has primarily featured as a fullback out wide, but not anything close to what would be considered a wingback that Kate Del Fava and Haley Mace frequently played in Matt Potter's system last season. Now, Haley Mace also plays fullback for the national team, so we know that there is some ability there for both players to play further back in the pitch, and Kate Del Fava is probably more comfortable playing further back. So, is Hannah Glass a replacement? And I think it's probably, yeah, this is a player with Champions League pedigree. This is a player who frequently features for one of the better national teams in the world. I think, if anything, it's good competition for a 24-year-old in Kate Del Fava that you've signed long-term. Hannah Glass has signed through at least 2024 with a mutual option for 2025. This team loves them some mutual options. That's all I'm going to say about that. So I think it's interesting. I was putting together a little bit of a exercise to see what this formation, what this roster could look like. Because I think there are some obvious questions, and this is a bit preliminary without seeing training camp and knowing that Claire Lavage is out until at least June, knowing that Desiree Scott had surgery and is still recovering, and you know now knowing that Mallory Weber still might not be back for the start season, of course, all your Sam Mewis related questions as well. So there are obviously some missing pieces here that as the season goes on, make the roster decision a little bit tougher. It also, you know, isn't necessarily talking about Michelle Cooper in that I think Michelle Cooper is going to be in that starting roster at some point. I don't think it happens right away. I think it's something that she'll have to grow into if you look at how Matt Potter used what he calls game changers, the rookies last season, and Elise Bennett and Chardonnay Karan. They both were kind of preferred in those late game, game changing environments. If you look at how Elise Bennett was used, I think that Michelle Cooper is a little bit more d- dynamic of a player. I think, you know, Casey definitely lose something with Lee Bennett and that she was such a different player to all the other forwards in that lineup. But Michelle Cooper is going to be the face of this team at some point. So she'll get worked in. But these are just kind of my starting 11 possibilities with this current roster. So, of course, you have A.D. French back there at goalkeeper. If we're sticking with the five in the back, the three center backs, I have Weber, Loera, and Ball as the, making up that kind of skeleton with Mace and Glass out wide, and then DiBernito, DiBernado, and Labanta as those kind of like centrally, DiBernado being a little bit deeper, Labanta being a little bit further up, and then Gatro sitting right underneath them. I'll put a graphic up here so it's not just my hands. But so if you have DiBernado as that deep lying playmaker, that changes once Desi Scott is healthy because I think that's the player that they like having there. Maybe they switch to double pivot again like we saw in the playoffs last year. Then you have Dabinia and Kaiser up front, but that front pairing, I think, I don't know if they want Dabinia playing as like the top player as well. I think they want her sitting back a little bit deeper in the midfield. That's why I think that my second roster is a little bit more likely um, and also, like, I'm not convinced that CZ Kaiser starts over Kristen Hamilton, who I know this team loves. And again, that's where Larson potentially comes in. Mimi Larson, that's where potentially Michelle Cooper comes in as well. This forward group is very fluid, and you're going to see that too. This is a team built to still be competitive when the World Cup starts, because they are too deep at basically every position. So my secondary roster would be if they go to a four in the back, like they tried at the start of last season before they switched to five in the back and had a lot of success from it. That's why I'm not sure if they do that just cautiously with all the success they had last season. But that's where you have AD, you have Mace and Glass as fullbacks as opposed to wingbacks. So they're not the only players operating in the wide spaces, which I think is also 
key to a little bit of a formation change. I think this team has so many players that can be so good in the wide spaces that having your wing backs is the only players out wide outside of interchanges potentially is setting yourself back a bit. So I have Mace, Loera, Ball, Glass, Gatro sitting at that deep line playmaker spot, Di Barnito, Labanta, and then Dabinia sitting as that center attacking mid. And then either Cooper Hamilton, Kaiser Larson, you have your forward, your two forwards up top. So your two forwards up top with Dabinia sitting as that center attacking mid. And I think that uses Dabinia's playmaking ability to the best of her ability as much as she played in various different spots in North Carolina. I think that's the way to use her best. So Hannah Glass's acquisition, in addition to the steam, is important because not only is she a world-class caliber player, but also makes it that when the World Cup comes around, Kate Delfava scored the most important goal in club history last year, and she's now your backup option for when Hannah Glass goes on international duty. So that's very important. This team is deep. They are too deep at every position, four deep at forward, and they have built a contender. They took a team that maybe unlikely made it to the finals last year and bolstered it up to the point where they should be the overwhelming favorites to get back to the final. Anyway, looking forward to next season and uh, let's move on. Hopefully we'll have some preseason content next week. The schedule comes out tomorrow and there have also been some other fun signings that we'll talk about a little bit later as well. So Hope you all enjoyed this little short video. Welcome back to full-length videos on the channel. I'll have a podcast posted tomorrow for you to enjoy. But in the meantime, thank you so much for hopping in. Let me know what you think about my roster predictions down below. If you think that a different starting 11 would be the way to go. Let me know. I'd love to know kind of your, your hypothesis, your exercises down in the comments. As always, if you're just stumbling along, give me that little like. Make sure you subscribe for more soccer content and we'll talk very, very soon.